In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is being offered for Maria Damien. May she rest in peace. Coming together as God's family, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made Bishop St. Cyril of Alexandria an invincible champion of the divine motherhood of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who believe she is truly the Mother of God may be saved through the incarnation of her Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abram told Sarai, Your maid is in your power. Do to her whatever you please. Sarai then abused her so much that Hagar ran away from her. The Lord's messenger found her by a spring in the wilderness, the spring on the road to Shur. And he asked, Hagar, maid of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She answered, I am running away from my mistress, Sarai. But the Lord's messenger told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her abusive treatment. I will make your descendants so numerous, added the Lord's messenger, that they will be too many to count. Besides, the Lord's messenger said to her, you are now pregnant and you shall bear a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard you. God has answered you. This one shall be a wild ass of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. In opposition to all his kin shall he encamp. Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named the son whom Hagar bore him Ishmael. Abram was 686 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord or proclaim all his praises? Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your people and glory with your inheritance. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you, depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them 
will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It has been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we're celebrating the memorial of St. Cyril of Alexandria, and he was the Bishop of Alexandria, Egypt. And what he is mostly known for, for us today, is that first of all, he was a scholar, he's a doctor of the church, but he was also um, the person that at the Council of Ephesus uh, maintained uh, Mary as the Theotokos, which means Mary as the mother of God or Mary as the God-bearer. And so as we heard in today's opening prayer, uh, one of the things that we understand is that Mary, uh, as the mother of God, as we know, she's also our mother as well, uh, so we celebrate that today. In today's first reading, we also hear this story of Hagar, who is the uh, servant of Sarah, whose name had not been changed yet. It was Sarai in today's uh, first reading. Essentially, we might remember that yesterday, Abram, who became Abraham, our father in faith, was concerned that he had no heirs. So there was going to be no one from his line that would um, essentially be an heir for him. And for the Jewish people especially, uh, to not have an heir to not ha essentially meant that, you know, what's the point? There's nobody to come forth from you to carry on uh, the tradition, in a sense. And so what's happening in today's first reading is that Sarah has concocted a plan for uh, Hagar to be the mother of the offspring of Abraham. And, but once she became pregnant, Sarah was very much annoyed with her. And so she essentially treated her badly, as we hear in today's uh, reading, the opening lines, and sent her on her way. Essentially, as we know, in the desert, a pregnant woman wandering around isn't going to last too long. So it was almost really uh, a death sentence. But what happened is the Lord had pity on her and told her to return to Sarah to put up with the bad treatment and ultimately, the son is born whose name is Ishmael. And just to kind of be clear on this, Ishmael becomes the father of the Arab people. So they kind of separate because eventually, I don't want to give away the story yet, I hope this is, um, I'm not ruining this for anyone, but eventually, uh, Sarah and Abraham do have a child. But we might notice that Abraham, in today's first reading, is 80-something years old, 86. And there's another reason and explanation for that as well. Because when you read the Old Testament, we're only in the very early parts of Genesis. People's lifespans were much longer. And the reason is that the closer that you are to Adam and Eve, to original sin, essentially, the, because basically Adam and Eve, part of their punishment was death. Remember that. They, there was no death before that. And so 
what happened is the closer you are to Adam and Eve, the longer the lifespan. The more sin enters the world, the shorter the lifespan. And that's something that you see played out throughout the uh, Old Testament books. Essentially, the whole point of this is that a good lifespan in the Jewish tradition is seen as a blessing, is seen as a blessing from God. So that's the thing you want to walk away with today. And as we listen to today's gospel, uh, Jesus is basically uh, helping us to understand that when we enter into a relationship with him, it's not just words. It's not just uh, that even as we hear in today's uh, gospel, it's not just doing the things that we think we should do. It's about having a relationship with the Lord. It's about having the Lord at the center of your heart. And it would be difficult, I think, today for maybe people to identify with this. But in the old days, and especially in the time that Jesus lived, most of the relationship with God is really a series of sacrifices. It would be following the laws. It would be dressing a certain way, eating certain foods. It was all ritual. What our Lord wants us to know in today's gospel unless we have a loving relationship with him, unless we allow his teachings to truly enter into our heart and to transform us, it's mere lip service. It is not something that is transforming us day by day. Ultimately, as we know, our Lord wants to gather all people to himself. He does not want to leave anyone behind. And he continues throughout our life to reach out to us with his love. Remember, this is the same Jesus that desired that if there was one stray sheep, you would go and look for that sheep rather than worry about the other 99. Our Lord wants to gather us to himself. He does not want to leave anyone behind. And so today, we remember Abraham, our father in faith. We remember Sarah as his wife. And we also remember that our Lord wants us to be with him. And this all came to be because Mary said yes, the eternal yes, to our Lord. And as we know, she is the mother of God. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray first of all for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for those who are least in our world, especially those who do not have enough food to eat, clean drinking water, or an opportunity for education. We pray to the Lord. Let's remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, friends, family members, that they may be one with Christ. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the intentions of the supporters of the Society of the Little Flower. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let's pray for first responders and for their safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Let us pray for our troops serving throughout the world to return safely to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and let us remember those who are sick, for those who are in need of God's healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord and let us now offer our own intentions, our own longings before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. 
Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through the intercession of St. Cyril of Alexandria. We ask our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. And today's uh, offerings are to help maintain the shrine and the museum. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Look with favor, although we pray, on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar on the feast day of blessed Cyril of Alexandria, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And give them all to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Cyril of Alexandria you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which you poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, keep me safe for everlasting life.
Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of blessed Cyril of Alexandria, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I leave Mount Carmel. Go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Enjoy your day. Thank you.